Okay, I'm ready. All righty, praise the Lord. Good morning, everyone. I hope you uh, had a good morning this morning. How many ate breakfast? Raise your hand. <laughs> I can't see you in Hawaii. Um, I had a, I had a um, tasty cake muffin. And um, a cup of coffee. I ain't going to tell you what else. But praise the Lord, uh, I'm full to the gills here this morning. And I hope that you are too. But we're going we're gonna to spiritually fill you up now. Take care of your, hung, your, uh, your physical hunger at home. We'll take care of your spir- spiritual hunger here. Uh, we have some music coming. We have uh, the, the Word going to be preached. And we're, we're pre, pre-Easter. I guess this, is, this would be Easter... Um, Easter Eve, 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 or something like that. It's hard to imagine it's Easter already, but praise the Lord. Um, I hope that you uh, hope that you uh, will experience Easter with Christ this year in your heart for sure. Alrighty, um, Debbie and Errol are going to lead us in some songs. Good morning, everybody. Praise the Lord. Beautiful day here in Maryland. We want to thank the Lord for everything he provides us. I had a little glitch this week, so I had turned your eyes upon Jesus on the list for songs, but it's going to be What a Friend We Have in Jesus, 503, hymn number 503. Intro, all verses, and then at the end we're going to repeat, Thou wilt find a solace there, twice. We'll, at the end we'll repeat it. So we're ready when everybody finds it.
apologize. It's the first time that we've heard it, so we while. weren't too sure. <laughs> Three oh five is our next hymn. I surrender all. We're going to do the intro, verses one, two, and four. We will repeat the refrain at the end. Did Caleb do a good job on that? Caleb did a yes, good job did. on that one. We 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 missed a beat. Like complex songs. Miss <laughs> Bev has the mess the verses today. We've already said you have the message today. <laughs> <laughs> she could do the message, that's for sure. Amen. Good morning, everyone. What a beautiful day to be in the house of God. I hope the weather's good where you are, but remember the sun is always shining. Amen. That's right. When I uh, one time took a plane ride above or to Florida, and I remember that it was really stormy when we got on the plane, but when we got above the clouds, mm -hmm. there it was the sun was shining and nothing was going on, and I just learned to know that. No matter what's going on in our lives, hey, the sun's always shining. Today we're going to read from Mark chapter 15. And so Pilate, willing to content the people, released 
Barabbas unto them and delivered Jesus. And when he had scourged him to be crucified, and all the soldiers led him away into the hall called Praetorium, and they called together the whole band. And they clothed him with purple and plaited a crown of thorns and put it about his head and began to salute him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. And they smote him on the head with a reed and did spit upon him and bowing their knees worshipped him. And when they had mocked him, they took off the purple from him and put his own clothes on him and led him out to crucify him. And they compelled one Simon, a Cyrenian, who had passed by, coming out of the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to bear his cross. May God bless the reading of the word. God is just a good God no matter what we are. And I praise the Lord for that. Some days, uh, some days we aren't the best in our human spirit. But God's always, uh, God's always above the human spirit. I listened to the, um, I listened to the scanner last night. I turned the, um, turned the D.C. and Baltimore, Washington, and Philadelphia International Airports on, listened to them for a while. And it was amazing. Um, you're right, sister. The, they, the, how the uh, planes navigate around the storms. They, uh, the, con- the air traffic controllers do a terrific job. We need to pray for them. They, uh, they navigate the planes around the storms, above the storms, below the storms, and the, um, the, normal, the normal, um, normal high for planes is 35,000 feet, and um, they go as low as, um, well, they go as low as touching on the ground, but you don't, that, that, that's, that's a different story. You don't want them to touch on the ground too much, but um, a, um, I heard him say last night, uh, the temperature they were they were 32,000 feet and the temperature was 42 degrees below zero. That's that's pretty chilly. It's a little bit on the nippy side. So praise the Lord, we're a little bit warmer than that here in Pinesburg this morning, and I know you're warming that in, in Hawaii. And uh, I, I mentioned Hawaii like because I'm, I'm jealous. I've never seen Hawaii. I probably never will see Hawaii. But um, if you um, if you want to send me some pictures, I'd appreciate it. I would I would uh, I would rejoice with you for sure. It's going to be Easter everywhere pretty soon, though. I told you before, I'm not a theme preacher much. I, I, um, I might preach a Christmas message in the middle of July, just the way I've always been. But it is, it is Easter time, and I thought I'd bring an Easter-y, E-E, that's a Pinesburg word, an easter message this morning. Um, but doesn't, doesn't, if you think about it, doesn't every song, doesn't every message um, talk about Easter? If it's not for Easter, we're in bad shape. Christmas, Christmas give us the the, uh, the Savior to um, to uh, sample what we should live by, be an example to us. But without Easter, we go to hell. And praise the Lord for Easter. Um, Miss Bev talked about the name Simon the Cyrenian. Cy- Cy- Cyrene is is a little town in North Africa. And Simon the Cyrenian, of course, is a black a black man, and um, he uh, he um, has a, di- a difficult position to play in the Easter story. You've probably never heard a message like I'm going to preach this morning. You say, "I believe that preacher," but um, you probably never heard one preached on Simon the Cyrenian. And I'm going to preach on that this morning. In our rush, follow me now. In our rush to Calvary. We take time to worship and think about the Savior, and well, we should. How Jesus died on the cross for us. He died on the cross before you even you were, you were even mentioned this morning. He died on the cross uh, knowing that we were going to be uh, the kind of people we are in 2024. He died on the cross loving us when we're not so lovable. He died on the cross proving He loved us. He wanted little. He wanted to. He created a whole world of little Jesuses. Is what his idea was. He wanted you and I to be like Jesus. Of course, we're not like Jesus. We failed. We failed in the, the Garden of Eden. And uh, he had to win us back. He couldn't let us. He couldn't let sin escape. Couldn't let it go. He couldn't look on it. So he uh, he sent his son to Calvary for us. In our rush to Calvary, we take time to worship the thief on the cross. 
we talk about the two, the two thieves on the cross and the one being saved and the one going to hell. And uh, the one that's saved never, never, did, um, never did see the inside of a church service, never did give an offering, never did pray a prayer, except that sinner's prayer. And um, he, um, he um, didn't have a, a good suit of clothes. He didn't have the right kind of shoes, but he got saved. In our rush to Calvary, we think about, we think about um, many different things. We think about uh, how much we detest the Pontius Pilate. You know the story of Pilate. He was sent to Pilate, and Pilate sent him to Herod. And Herod sent him back to Pilate. Pilate said, I, I don't have anything to do with this man. He, uh, he tried to wash his hands with, with, of, the, of the blood of Christ. And uh, it doesn't matter to this day, listen to me, it doesn't matter to this day, you can't, you can't wash the blood, off of, the blood of Christ off your hands. You can't do it. You, um, you can try. You can try to excuse. There, there's, a, there's, a, there's folks missing in church this morning. They can make up any excuse they want to make. But the, the problem is we've taken our eyes off Jesus too much. We try to wash the, wash the blood off our hands. In our rush to Calvary, we think about Mary Magdalene. In our rush to Calvary, Mary Magdalene was one that was possessed by seven demons. You remember, you remember the story? She probably was the most forgiven at the cross, if you think about it. Um, it's, um, it's, a, it's a marvelous story. You ought to read about it sometime. I'll, I'll not get into it this morning. But in our, cross, in our uh, rush to the cross, to Calvary, we criticize those who wrongly tried our Savior. We think about, um, we think about the Roman soldiers and Pilate and, and Herod and different ones. And we, um, we, um, we think, um, how terrible can that be to put a just man in tri on trial, to put a, guilty, to put a non-guilty man in jail, but more than that, put a non-guilty man on the cross. And um, in our rush to Calvary, we pity those apostles who seemingly lost everything at this time. You think about the fellows that Think about the fellows that followed Jesus for those three and a half years. They they uh, they ate what he ate. They ate, they slept where he slept. They walked where he walked. They didn't have, they didn't have the Greyhound bus to take. They didn't have the the uh, Uber to call. They had to they had to get there by by um, by picking them up, put them down, shoe leather. And uh, we we think about them. In our rest recovery, we hurt for the Mar the mother of Jesus, Mary. Um, what a what a what a powerful person in Scripture she is, and she was as she was destined to carry the, the Son of God, not just another baby. If it would have just been another baby, it would have been a miracle, but it was the Son of God, um, the Savior of the world. And can you imagine whenever he was born? We think about the the cradle and all that. We think about the manger and all that. But think about when he was born. Know, Mary knowing that he was the mother of. He was, the, he was the, the savior of all the world. Think about when he got a runny nose. Oh my, he's getting sick. I'm entrusted with Jesus and he's getting sick. Think about, the, think about when he, um, when he um, was it two and a half days he took off when he was 12 years old, went into the synagogue preaching. And uh, oh my, Joseph, where, where's he at? Well, I thought he was with you. No, I thought he was with you. Where, Jesus, where are you at? Oh my, we were entrusted with God. We lost him. We lost God. Jesus is missing. But he comes, he comes back and everything, everything turns out okay. We, uh, we think about, in our rush to Calvary, we think about Joseph of, of, of Arimathea. But seldom did you ever hear a message preached on Simon the Cyrenian. The Bible doesn't say much about Simon the Cyrenian. Just two places in the Bible talks about him. It does say that Jesus was being beaten beyond the, the, the recognition of recognition. And Simon come out of the out of the woods. I don't know what that means. He was traveling out of town, going to going to Jerusalem, going to somewhere to uh, get some supplies maybe. To uh, I know he wasn't going to McDonald's because it wasn't in McDonald's back in those days. Praise the Lord. Um, he was going somewhere to get supplies, some something to eat, something to sustain himself. And he sees this fellow being beaten. He just almost can't tell who it is.
test, test, test. Suddenly he's, um, he sees this person that's, uh, that, that's being beaten. He just barely tells the person. But um, he, um, he realizes what it is and um, what was going on. And um, he said, um, what's that on his back? Why, that's a cross. This person is, person is evidently, evidently um, going, lady, going down the hill to be crucified or going up the hill to be crucified. Crucifixion in those days wasn't an, wasn't an abnormal thing. It happened all the time. But um, there was only one time a king was put on the cross. And uh, Simon said, what, what's, he, what's he being tried for? What's he being, what, what did he do? Well, he's probably being tried for treason. He claims he's a king. But I don't see no kingy on him. I don't see no reason he should be a king. But, um, but um, he, says, um, he says, I don't know. I don't, I, don't, I, don't want, I don't want to have anything to do with it. I'm going on into town. He turns around and starts to walk away. And a, and a soldier says, hey, you. Hey, you, follow me now. Hey, you, come over here. Pick up this, pick up this cross that he can't carry anymore and drag it up the hill. Simon says, um, why should I do that? I didn't, I, I'm not guilty of anything. I don't even know the guy. I don't, I don't want to have anything to do with it. Sounds like today, doesn't it? Um, but he says, um, I, I, don't know, I don't know the man. Who is it? Well, it's Jesus, the king of the Jews. And um, Simon, um, Simon says, okay. He goes over and picks up the cross. He starts to drag it up the hill. He definitely didn't volunteer to do it. He definitely didn't want to do it. He definitely had um, second thoughts about doing it. But the burden was cast on him. He, uh, he got out of bed that morning. Everything was fine. Everything was good. Everything was the same. But he suddenly has a burden thrown on him like he's never had on him before. And um, changed, his whole, changed his whole day. Matter of fact, it changed his whole life. Matter of fact, it changed the whole world. Um, something else, he was, he was compelled to carry the cross. He, um, he didn't have a choice. Hey, you. Whenever somebody says, hey, you, you always listen because you know they're after something. You know. Um, hey, you, get over here and carry this cross. He did not know why he was carrying the cross, of the, the burden of the cross. He didn't understand why he was carrying the cross up the hill. He, didn't, he couldn't figure it out. Why didn't the soldiers carry the cross? They're the ones putting him on it. Why didn't his family help him out? They're standing here watching. Um, and listen, Simon to this day, this is important, Simon to this day would be in the pits of hell had he not carried that burden for Christ because he got saved. He gave his heart to the Lord and he got saved. May I suggest this morning that this just might, might be what the Bible meant when it said, pick up that cross and follow me. It may be that you had something like this happen to you. You got up one morning, maybe this morning, you got up one morning, you got dressed, you started to work, you went to work, went about the, the day and all was fine, then before you know it, all of a sudden a burden was, was placed on you. Unwanted, unmerited, without notice, nobody said, um, nobody said Debbie, the burden's coming your way so you could get ready for it. It was just hurled on you. Nobody said, um, Judy, be ready. There's something heavy headed your way. It's pretty heavy. You better, you better uh, be ready to go because the burden's headed your way. Nobody said that. It just happened to you. You fell it on your shoulders. Um, stories I could tell. They did not, they did not um, know that before the day was over, they'd find their little baby in the pool fa fa face down ground they did not they did not know that all of a sudden her husband would, would have a heart attack he did not know that all of a sudden his wife would would uh, would fall down on the ground dead of a heart attack 
husband and wife sent him to my office just 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 recently. Um, they they had no they had no idea that when they got up in the morning everything was fine. Nothing had changed from the night before. Um, had no idea what was about to happen. When the when the daughter came home from school, said, "Mom and Dad, I have something I need to tell you. I'm pregnant." She's 14 years old, ready to be a mama, ready to go out into the world, has no training, has no idea what's going to happen, has no idea how tough things are going to, things are going to be. Burdens most always creep up on you. You can see some of them coming, but most of the time they creep up on you. You would not choose to have them for sure. It's like... um. Like someone, it's a, someone says, it's a terrible time to be sick. What, what's a good time to be sick? <laughs> if, I, if I had to choose to be sick, I'd, I'd choose to be well. That, that's a terrible thing happened. You got, got in a car wreck. Um, just just, just un, unreal, the, as busy as you are. Does it hurt worse when you're not busy? No. Now, here's the message. When this happens... To you, and if it hasn't happened yet, it will. It's probably happened, maybe even this morning. But when this happens to you, you have a decision to make. Are you going to growl about it? Are you going to gripe and complain? Where are you this morning? Are you going to say, like Simon said, "I got this burden. I don't desire. I don't desire it. I don't deserve it. I um. I don't want. I don't want it." I'm going to try, I'd, I'd try to get rid of it, but I can't. So I'm going to carry it. I'm just going to carry it. You got up this morning and everything was fine. All of a sudden, something happens. You didn't get your way. You didn't hear what she said. So what? You didn't get your way. I'm going to Hold my breath till I turn blue. Go ahead. Go ahead. My mama said, my mama, I said that to my mom one time. I, was, I thought she was going to give me some, some love, and she said, go ahead. She knew I couldn't, she knew I couldn't hold myself. You can't, you, can't, you can't voluntarily suffocate yourself by just holding your breath. Um, I, um, I'm going to protest, preacher. I'm going to... I'm going to um, I'm going to give up. That, that's on you. That's on you. You give up, that's between you and God. I can't, I can't carry the burden. You can if you want to. You can if you have to. Uh, why carry it when you can give it up? Because Jesus asked you to carry it. You didn't, you didn't sign that document. It's like whenever you got saved. It's sort of like signing a document. Um, a covenant covenant is something that God keeps as a promise. You promised me, God says, when you got saved you were going to pray. Have you prayed? Have you read your Bible? Have you, have you talked to someone about Christ? You promised me when you signed that, that letter of intent to uh, teach that Sunday school class, you're going to teach that Sunday school class no matter what. I don't feel like it. Too bad. I don't feel like it. Do it yourself. Do it, do it anyhow. I don't, I don't, uh, I don't, uh, I'm not, um, I think I'm uh, down in the dumps a little bit this morning. Get, get out of the dump and get, get back on top for God. That's the way God wants us to be. Um, why are you, um, what are you going to do? Complain because you didn't deserve it? Or are you going to carry the cross like Simon did? 31 years ago this week. She came to my office. She was supposed to be married next week. She said, Pastor John, I found out last night that my husband to be went out with a woman this week. She said, What am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to say? I said, do you want, you want me to tell you the truth? She said, yeah, that's why I came. I said, I want you to call off the wedding. Just call it off. 
But everything's paid for. The gifts are all in. The hall's been paid for. The food's been ordered. I said, call it off. Call it off. People would take their gifts back that they, that they bought already. The, if, you, if you lose money on the food and stuff, you lose money on the food. But my, my wedding dress just is so beautiful. I picked it up and it just said, you'll be able to wear it again someday. She limped out of my office just crying and I sat in my chair just bawling up a storm. She didn't expect that to happen. She got up in the morning thinking, man, one more week and I'm married. And um, about six months passed. I'd been with her about every week, two or three times a week, trying to straighten things out for her, help her straighten things out. About six months passed, and a gentleman came to my office. He said, Preacher, I'm 25 years old. I've never dated anybody. But I'm, get, I'm lonely. I need someone to date. I said, I got just a person for you. I said, um, I know a young lady. I told her by name. I wouldn't. I'll, I will not m mention the name because some of you might know her by chance. I mentioned her name, and she said, "He said I, she's a queen." I said I can't marry a queen. I can't date a queen. I said she's a, she's a little snot nosed brat like everybody else is. He said, um, "Are you sure?" I said, "I know her pretty well. I've been with her two times a week for about six months now. I think maybe I can arrange her a meeting with you." And um, he said, um, well, I don't know. I don't know. Can you really? Yeah, I can. I called her, in that, called her that afternoon. I said, I said, I have a gentleman I want you to meet. I said, I don't want, I'm not promising, any, promising you anything. I'm not asking you to do anything. I said, just, just, uh, just have lunch with him. They, get, they got together. He said, um, he, he, he was uh, really backward. He said, Preacher, where should I take her to lunch? I, said, I, got, I got enough money to go to Burger King. I said, don't take her to Burger King. I had, um, I had a couple bucks in my pocket. I scrounged up a couple bucks out of my, out of my desk drawer. And I said, here, take her to, take her to, um, take her to um, Olive Garden, someplace like that. Can't go wrong with all Olive Garden because they serve all the spaghetti you can eat. And I said, um, I said, um, don't, don't, um, don't be bashful, don't be backward. She's, she's not that way. She's, she's a good, she's, a, she's a good looker too. He said, boy, I hope so. I said, I waited all these years. I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to prune. I said, she's not a prune. She's a good looker. Long story short, they got together. They fell in love with each other. To this day, they're married and they have two kids. It's unreal what God will do when we allow God to work in our lives. And it's all because she carried that burden. She said, she said Pastor, I, I, can't, I don't understand. I think I'll just forgive him and, and move on. I said, don't do it. You'll, you'll be sorry all your life. You'll have that in the back of your head all your life. Preacher, I just found out last night my husband has stage 4 cancer. Yesterday afternoon, I mean. What do you want what what should I do? I said I prayed, I prayed and I prayed. I said I'll be praying too and I'll get the church to pray and we'll put him on the prayer sheet and all this stuff. But she said she said um, I'm afraid he's going to die. I said he just might. He just might. But he might, he might live. Praise God, we don't control that. God does. I said, I'll make, a, I'll make, a, I'll make it a point to pray 10, 15 minutes an extra per day if you'll, if you'll pray with me. And she said, I'll do that. And um, she came two months later and she said, Pastor, my husband died last night, overnight. 
She said, I can't, I can't hardly, I can't hardly bear this burden. She said, ask Jesus to take it from me. I said, I can't do that. Jesus doesn't take burdens to they, Jesus doesn't take the burdens away. He gives us strength to carry through the burdens. You, you'll never find anywhere in the Bible where Jesus took anybody's burden away. Where he took anybody's trouble away. He always gives us he always gives us strength to make it through. He always gives us strength to make it up the mountain. Take up thy cross and follow me. It just might be that this this is part of what it means. To just take our burden. Take the burden off of Jesus. Imagine what the world would be like had Simon said, uh, I'm not going to do it. Well, he'd have been killed for one thing. But had he, not, had he not carried that cross up the hill, Jesus would not have been crucified the way he should have been. I don't know why, but he loves you just the way you are. I don't know why, but he loves me just the way I am. Can't figure it out. I said, um, I said, uh, Billy, his name was Billy. I said, Billy, whatever you do, treat this lady right. He said, I will. He said, she is a queen. I said, I said, sister, let me, let me help you bear your burden. I know your husband just passed. But God's good. God's good. Two different stories, two different, two different outcomes. But the same God. The same God. I'm saying I do not know why burdens come your way. If I, if I choose to, to, to have a burden or not have a burden, I, I choose to not have it. If I choose, and I, I mean this with all my heart, if I choose to, if I, if I had a choice, if I had the, the ability to say, God, give me, give me a burden instead of giving it to Carlet, I'd do it. Give me a burden instead of, instead of giving it to, to Brother Mike, I'd take it. I know he'd do the same for me. But we need to bear that burden. And it's decision time. It's decision time. Easter is a time when, like no other, no other time when the name of Christ is mentioned. Even at Christmas time, people sing Christmas carol, but they don't. They don't. They don't think about Christmas so much. About, Je about Jesus as much as they do at Easter time. You think you have a burden? Think about what Jesus is going to go through this week, years ago, leading up to the cross, leading up to the, to uh, Palm Sunday, and then up to the cross. Let's do ourselves. Let's do ourselves a favor. And keep our eyes on Jesus. Let's do ourselves a favor and not try to pass off our burden on somebody else. But um, take your burden to the Lord, and you won't have to leave it there. He'll carry it. He'll carry it with you. He'll carry it with me, with you. Jesus said, "Take up thy cross and follow me." Now it's up to you. It's up to you. The gentleman got in the. Stories told. A gentleman got into a taxi cab with a 50 pound bag of potatoes. And instead of, um, instead of laying the 50 pound bag of potatoes on the floor, he carried them in his lap. The taxi driver said, Why don't you lay them on the floor? He said, um, I didn't want the cab to suffer any more weight than, than what was already here. And he didn't realize that the weight was the weight, no matter what. We uh, we uh, we carry we carry burdens around like a fifty-pound bag of potatoes. We can we can ask Christ to to help us with our burden. You can't do that though until you have Jesus in your heart. Are you sure you're Are you sure beyond being sure that you have Jesus in your heart? I'm not saying I'm not saying that uh, that you that you know Jesus. That you know of Jesus. I'm saying that, that you absolutely have Christ in your heart. You can remember a place in your life where you asked Jesus to come in your heart. That's what's important. Um, if we're going to take up cross, Christ's cross and follow him, 
It's going to be tough. The devil hasn't begun to fight yet. He's going to pull out all the stops in these last days. You read the newspaper, you listen to the news. I turned Fox News on last night for a little bit. It sounded like, it sound like a, a part of Revelation. It's, it's coming, it's happening, it's happening now. I truly believe that there's going to be some of us in this building that are going to be here when Jesus comes back. We're going to see, we're going to see, the, we're going to see the, the clouds part and we're going, to, we're going to follow him in the air. Amen. The graves are going to open, the seas are going to give up those that are in them and um, we're going to all be joined together with Jesus in the air. Praise God, if it's today, are you ready? Are you ready? With heads bowed and with eyes closed, I ask you to search your heart. Are you able to take up that cross and follow him? Jesus, I pray that we would be somewhat worthy of you this morning. But we can't do that on our own. We can't be like we need you to be we need to be for you till we have you in our heart. And we need to um, we need to just totally surrender our lives to you and let you have your way in our lives. If you're here this morning, you're in a nursing home this morning, you're traveling down the road this morning, you're listening to this on Tuesday night or Wednesday night, whatever it might be. And you know you don't, you don't have Christ in your heart. You know you know you want to go to heaven, but you don't know how to get there. It's simple. Something, just, just pray a prayer or something like this. Dear Lord Jesus, I know I've sinned. Come into my heart. Forgive me of every sin. And thank you, Jesus, for saving my soul. In Jesus' name, amen. If you can pray a prayer or something like that, no set words, just, just mean it in your heart, you're ready to go to heaven. Praise God, you're ready to go to heaven. That's something to shout about. Something to be excited about. With all the things that's going on in the world, we're citizens of two worlds now. One heaven and one here. Praise God for that. Have you taken up the cross of Christ? Have you, um, have you given your all for Jesus? There's folks today that are sitting home that should be in church. I don't know who you are, but you're sitting at home and you should be in church. And you know it. There's folks that, that, that are, that are um, other places than in this church or in their home church. They ought to be in their home church. It's said that the softball fields are full today, but the um, church houses are empty. You know what's going on. You know what's happening. So fill, fill the place with people that you need to fill it with this morning, God. Cause us to be the kind of people we need to be and we'll be the kind of person to you that we need to be. Thank you, Jesus, for saving my soul, for helping me through life. I pray that you'd help these people this morning through their everyday lives. When the burden comes, and it's going to come, we, 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 we won't want it, we won't expect it, we won't deserve it. think of the story in closing. Every head bowed, every head bowed, and every eye closed. The um, family came to my office, and she said, um, "She said, Pastor, my daughter is is pregnant, and I don't know what to do." Said everybody in the neighborhood's thinking I'm a terrible person. I've been, I've been, I've been almost excommunicated from the church. Let me say this: head still bowed, eyes still closed. No matter what your sin is, you're welcome at church. No matter what you've done, you're welcome at church. You just, you just come in the door, and make yourself at home. That's the, that's the kind of Jesus we have. I said, let me help you. I'll, I'll be praying for you and I'll, I'll, I'll talk to some people for you she said okay she said 
my church, my church, the pastor of my church, I happened to know who he was. He called me and said, uh, he said, I'm sorry, I'm sorry that we treated you the way we did. I want, we want you to come back. She said, I went back to church and everything was fine. I'm not condoning the sin that, that took place. But uh, Jesus is, is a good God. He's a big God. He went to the cross for you. a little bit I pray that um, I pray that um, somehow some way I can I can be what you need me to be to somebody that needs to needs to have me this morning the burden is yours to carry that cross for Christ so please carry it please carry it I want you to do me a favor this week with head still bowed and eyes still closed Think of someone that's not here this morning that should be here. I want you to take their name and pray for them this week. If you see them, I want you to ask them to get back in church where they need to be, where they desire to be. I pray that um, church houses all across America could be filled next week, being Palm Sunday, and Easter Sunday following. Father, please call us to be what, what we need to be this weekend. We'll thank you in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you for being patient this morning. We had, had a couple snafus here this morning. I don't know what happened to my mic. Um, but uh, praise the Lord. Uh, the Lord's good. We, uh, we, um, we'll be back here next Sunday for, for um, Palm Sunday. And for you in nursing homes, um, you in nursing homes, have a great week. Be, be safe. If you're there here in Pinesburg, be safe. Um, as you go about the day, uh, plan, plan carefully not to do anything dumb. And um, um, make sure you, you run across that one. You will. That one person, that one person that may be just down the dumps ready to quit, give them a big old hug and a smile and tell them that, uh, that you love them because there's always somebody who has it a little bit worse than what you do. Remember that. Thanks, thanks for coming. God bless you. You are dismissed.